everyone, and welcome to Lawapa News, a program made by Scouts for Scouts, right here in the Northeastern Pennsylvania Council. My name is Leo Cahagis, and welcome to all of our viewers from throughout Pennsylvania and across the country. On this week's episode, we'll be learning some rescue techniques that could save someone's life while out on the water. First off, though, let's check out some local headlines. Although traditional summer camp programs were canceled this year, Scouts in the NEPA Council still had the opportunity to come out and take part in some camp program. On the weekends of August 1st and August 8th, Scouts were able to head out to Goose Pond Scout Reservation and earn a variety of merit badges while maintaining social distancing. On August 14th and 15th, Luwapani Lodge successfully hosted its Ordeal Induction Weekend. Scouts in attendance acted responsibly and maintained social distancing. Ordeal candidates were able to provide some much appreciated service to Camp Akahila, including the installation of some new trails, as well as much needed camp maintenance. That does it for this week's local updates. Knowing how to rescue someone who's struggling in the water could be necessary to saving a life. For more on that, let's head over to the aquatics area at Goose Pond Scout Reservation with our own Matt Matichka. Hi, I'm Matt Matichka, and today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about different water rescues. So there's four different types of water rescues. There's reaching rescues, throwing rescues, rowing rescues, and going rescues. And today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about reaching rescues and throwing rescues. Okay, so the first type of rescue we're gonna be talking about is a reaching rescue. So reaching rescue is used when the victim is close enough to the edge of the water that you can reach in with either an arm, a leg, or another piece of equipment and safely bring them back to the dock or the edge of the pool. So to do a reaching rescue with your arm, you're gonna lay down on the edge of the water. Make sure you have three points of contact so that way they can't pull you in. Then you're gonna reach out to the drowning victim, say, hey, grab on. And they grab on, you bring them to the dock, and then you're gonna ask them if they can get out on their own. Can you get out on your own? Yep, I'm good. Okay, so then your job is Thank done. You. And then you can do the same type of rescue, but with your leg. You can't, it's not really good to do a leg somewhere here where the water is a little bit further off the dock, but this works really well at the edge of a pool. So when you're doing a res reaching rescue with your leg, you can do the same thing, three points of contact, but now you're gonna reach out your leg to them and say, hey, grab on. <sighs> then you're gonna bring them back to the dock, say, grab the dock. Are you able to get out? Yes, sir. Perfect. And another type of reaching rescue you can do is with a different piece of equipment. This helps um, if they're a little further away and it also makes it a lot safer to do the rescue is if the victim, if you're reaching out to them with your arm or your leg, the victim, there's a possibility they can pull you in. But if you're doing it with a different piece of equipment, then you can just let go of the equipment if your life becomes threatened. So if you're using a piece of equipment like this stick here, you grab it with your thumbs up because you're saving the victim. You put it in the water and feed it out to them, say, hey, grab on. And you bring them back to the dock. Perfect, are you able to get out? Yep, thank you. So the next type of rescue we're talking about is a throwing rescue. This is the type of rescue used when they're a little further away from the edge of the water and you can't reach out to them. So when you're throwing something at the victim, you wanna make sure you throw it past them so that way they can grab on. Um, you can really throw anything to them. Usually it's a ring buoy or another floating device. I have a floating cushion here. Um, you could also just use a throw bag with rope in it. Um, anything that you can throw out past the victim. So now you're gonna throw it out past the victim. You wanna make sure that you have the slack in one hand, but you're not holding onto it tight, so that way the slack can get fed out. You're gonna throw it to them like a bowling ball, so that way it goes out nice and far and steady. You don't wanna throw it like a basketball, like a frisbee. So now we're gonna throw it out past the victim, like that. You start to pull it in again with your thumbs up. And you're going to pull back hand over hand. When it gets close to the victim, you're going to say, "Hey, grab on." And you're going to pull them in. Grab the dock. Are you able to get out? Yep. Hey, perfect. So in practice, these rescues could be used to save a life. Hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching. Thanks, Matt. Let's check in with world-renowned zoologist Joe Norvillis to see the epic climax of his quest for the Wookiee. 
Previously on Loapa News. I think I, I just heard him. Okay, so I've chased them down into the outlet through the pond, now down into the outlet. And I, I, he could be, I think he's just right around here somewhere. Let's try to call him. Alrighty, so I found them. I found Wookie and Eagle and Rudolph. That night, Joe found something more important than the search for the Wookie. He found friendship and a new respect for wildlife. Thanks, Joe. What an incredible end to the search. For the last segment on today's show, we go to Mr. Manello, Luapanu Lodge's own advisor, for the Scoutmaster's Minute. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Manello. I'm the Lodge Advisor for Luapanu Lodge, and I was asked by our Chief Leo to give this week's Scoutmaster Minute. I was sitting here in the office thinking about what to say, and as I looked at the picture on my wall, which you could see behind me, of Muhammad Ali, after he won his heavyweight championship fight, the title under that picture is Muhammad Ali, the greatest, which he was. So it kind of inspired me on what to talk about today a little bit. Back in the early to mid-70s, a movie came out written by Sylvester Stallone about a small-time boxer who worked hard and was given the opportunity to fight for a heavyweight championship fight, which was kind of inspiring. The one character that, in that movie, though, that always stood out to me was Mickey. He was a rough and tough type of guy, and he was Rocky's trainer. There are many quotes from the movie that Mickey had, but the one that sticks out in my mind the most is, you're a bum, Rock. You're a bum. Calling Rocky a bum. Well, in the movie, it wasn't really a compliment, but I'm going to suggest a little twist. Maybe you want to be a bum, a B-U-M. When search and rescue teams, along with first responders, rescue people with ropes, the number one thing they do is to tie off onto a big unmovable object, a B-U-M. This could be a large boulder or a very large or mature tree. The purpose of doing this is so you secure yourself so that you don't become a victim also when trying to rescue those in need. Your big unmovable object that you have faith and trust in. You know that no matter what happens, it will not move or budge in any way or form. This could be said for some people in our lives. There are family members and friends that you have, no matter how tough things are, they'll always be there to help and support you. The goal you should have for yourself is to become one of those big unmovables for the people in your life. I want you to take some time and reflect on those individuals in your life that you can call a BUM. Thank you, and back to you, Leo. Thank you very much, Mr. Manello. Well, folks, that does it for another episode of Luwapa News. Make sure to tune in next time for some more scouting content. Until then, this has been Leo Cahagis reminding you to keep on scouting.